Welcome to Empowered by Iron, hosted by Dr. Kristen Lander from Fiercely Fueled Nutrition Coaching and Mary Morton from Grad Gains, the online resource for your fitness needs. Together, we are Empowered by Iron. Hey guys, it's Kristen. Mary and I are here today to talk to you about um, the one key thing that will determine your success in meeting your goals um, throughout life, whether it's in the gym, nutrition, work, um, life, whatever. Um, and then the three attributes that will help you um, in getting there. So the one key thing is consistency. Um, you need consistency um, in life, in, in your pursuit of your goals. Um, to actually meet your goals. So Mary is going to tell us what that first attribute is. So the first thing that we came up with, the first attribute was probably one of the most important things, and that's patience. You need to be patient and stick whatever it is out. You know, you're not going to get results overnight, and this could be taken, I mean, we're, we are a fitness podcast so we're mostly interested in training and nutrition but this can totally be carried over into your work into your relationships but you need to be patient and stick it out for example let's say that you want to cut a little weight and so you decide to hop on a, a, a nutrition program you hire a coach and a couple weeks in you don't feel like you've made progress you need to be patient a lot of these things are just going to take time like for me, for example, every time I want to get on some sort of nutrition thing or try to do a cut or what have you, I know that I'm not insanely patient with myself when it comes to that. And so I have to take a step back and evaluate the situation, you know, come to reality and realize that it's only been a couple of weeks. I need to stick it out. I need to be consistent and I need to be patient. Right, and with consistency, we're not saying be perfect all the time. Oh, That's no. not consistency. No. That's impossible to be 100% perfect all the time. It's about, um, you know, doing the best that you can for as long as you can. And so it's about longevity. So yes. you want to, um, you know, don't, if it's um, nutrition, you don't want to go on some crazy diet and go like balls to the walls for a couple of weeks and then decide, oh, this isn't working and then give up on it, um, which people do over and over. And the same goes for training plans. People are like, okay, I found this program where I'm going to put like 20% on my back squat in 12 weeks and which is actually a lot, <laughs> but, but you know, some sort of crazy plan. And then, um, you know, you get a few weeks into it and you're like, oh, I don't feel like I'm getting stronger. Well, you, you, you know, you're, you're not going to see those results. We all know that particularly with squats, you're going to, you're going to feel weak and terrible. If you're doing a really intense squatting program, you have to stick it out. Like you can't always be looking for the next best thing. You've right. got to get through whatever it is you decided you're going to do and then do something else or do that thing again. Just keep doing it. Right. You can't expect for a 12-week program to drop out at week six and have the same results. You just have to kind of go with the flow and trust the program. Right. Right. So if the first thing is patience. Patience. The second attribute is resilience. Kristen, why don't you tell us about resilience? Yeah. So um, you don't, in training, in nutrition, in life, you don't want to take, like, these small little bumps that we're going to have in the road and blow them out of proportion and make them into mountains. Don't turn molehills into mountains. Um, so what is your, um, what is your story about resilience? So Chris and I just had this conversation before we started recording and it had to do, we were just talking about squat cycles and I'm in the middle of a squat cycle right now. That's hard. I mean, it's the hardest squat cycle I've probably ever done, but I'm also trying to train for a competition I have coming up. And so it was the other day, I had a horrible day of training. I just couldn't get it together. I'm not sure what was going on, blah, blah, blah. And the last thing I had to do was squats. And I was in such a bad place mentally 
that I knew if I tried to push through, my squats wouldn't be good. I probably wouldn't finish them. I'd be so down on myself the whole time. I was hungry. I was tired. So I took a step back and told myself, you know, yes, I need to be resilient, but at the same time, I kind of need to take a step back and go home. Yeah, because what happens in your brain, you were telling me something really interesting that happens in your brain when you get to that place. Yeah, I cannot get myself out of that place. I have to take myself out of that physical location and bring myself someplace else and think about it and reevaluate and then I can bring myself back. But I can't push through, which is what you were saying you can do. Yeah, so you get a lot of like negative self-talk going on in your life. Totally negative. You have to... You, you physically have to remove yourself from that situation. Absolutely. And then that gives you some perspective, yep. right? Yep. Yeah. And I'm, I'm a little bit the opposite. Um, so if I am doing, I've done this many times, a really hard squat cycle and I'm failing reps when I shouldn't be failing reps and it frustrates me, but I am extremely strong headed and I have to fight through it. I just push through it. I do the absolute best I can and then I leave the gym and that's it. It's done for the day. I'm not worried about it. I don't obsess over it. I don't think about it. I just know like, well, that really sucked and I know I didn't become, like, the world's shittiest weightlifter overnight. Like, it, <laughs> it, it, it's just, it was a bad day in the gym. But if I were to leave the gym not having done those squats and say, I'm going to get my mind right and come back, I won't get my mind right. It won't, it won't happen. I have to actually complete the task. I have to push through and fight through the task. And then, um, and I, I do a really good job of doing that. And then, um, if I, if I leave, I start, that's when my negative self-talk comes in. So I'll sit at home and I'll obsess over it. And I just spend way too much time thinking about something that really doesn't matter in life. No. Um, so, so, um, yeah, so two totally different perspectives of how you can be resilient in your training. Yeah. Um, and that really kind of feeds into the third attribute, yeah. which is knowing yourself. Like Kristen and I both, I mean, we're both very good weightlifters. We both are pretty intense at the gym, but we just have different ways of tackling these problems because we've taken the time to take a step back and say, hey, for example, me, when I try to push through the workout, my workout becomes worse and I probably should have just skipped whatever I was going to do anyway and just given up on it completely rather than push through So instead of doing that, I take a step back, pull myself out, come back for a second session, and that's that's just how I get through it. But it comes back to knowing yourself. Yeah, you need to know what it is that you need and how to go about keeping in mind consistency. How am I going to get through this today? Um, and that answer is different for everyone. everyone. As we know, what works for you doesn't work for me at all. No. Um, and vice versa. So, um, I think one of the hardest things is going on social media and just seeing all these people talking so big about, you got to fight it. You got to want it. You got to push through. And as much as I do believe that to some extent, I think that, you know, sometimes you're stupid to push through. Sometimes absolutely, you really need to stop and take a step back. And yes, be consistent, but be consistent in the way that you approach your problems too. Yeah. So don't be so consistent. Don't, don't say, okay, I need to be consistent, meaning I need to do all this right now. But if that's how you approach your problems, by taking a step back and evaluating, be consistent in that. You still finished everything you need to do. You still, you know, fit, you still got through it. Right. And now you're that one step closer to whatever goal it was. But, you know, don't go on social media and look at these people who are saying, oh, you need to be 100%. You got to want it. You got to bleed for it. Like, whatever. That's so stupid. I do think that kind of language is a little damaging because it leads us to believe that we're not allowed to have bad days. Yeah. Or we're not allowed, like, we're not allowed to make mistakes in our nutrition or to just have a bad day in the gym or you know, be a little off at work or whatever it is. Um, I, I really do think that those, um, that those sorts of posts and that mindset is really damaging because you can't be expected to be perfect all the time. And that does not lead to consistency and consistency is what leads to success. So if you're trying to be perfect all the time, you're going to fail. 
Don't and then set when yourself you fail, up. Yeah, don't yeah. set yourself up for failure. If you're perfect all the time and all of a sudden you break that perfection, you find it's more of a black and white thing where all of a sudden they've broken that perfection and now it's going to be three weeks before they get back on that perfection. Whereas if they just tried to hit 80 to 90% for those three weeks or whatever, mm-hmm. they'd be so much further along. And that goes for not just nutrition and training, guys. That goes for work. Like, if you're at work and you're 100% all the time, well, then you're going to have weeks where you come in and you're like, shit, like, what am I doing here? And you're going to waste your time. You're going to be on the internet. And then you might as well just not have come into work at all. I understand you still have to go into work, but, you know, go to work and just be consistent. Write yourself a list, a to-do list. And once you check those things off, like, you've won for the day. And just be okay with doing 90% and being consistent rather than doing 100% and being inconsistent. Right. Because in the long run, consistency is... Absolutely key. Key. Absolutely Mm -hmm. key. All right. So, those... Three attributes, again, are patience, resilience, and know yourself. And don't be afraid to take time to learn to know yourself. I think that's something we missed when talking about that is Mm -hmm. you're not going to know yourself overnight. You're going to hit these bumps and you're going to react. You're going to be like, that was weird. That didn't work. And next time you hit a bump, try something else. You're not going to know yourself perfectly, but at least listen to yourself. Yeah. So this is actually interesting. Um, I want to talk about that a little more. What do you do to know yourself? What do you, what are the tools that you utilize to figure out who you are and what you want and what you like? Oh my goodness. (laughs) You weren't prepared for that, were you? (laughs) That was was a good question. Well, I guess it, it, I I guess I can use this example. So for a while I was a power lifter Mm -hmm. and I never really liked power lifting I got very anxious when I go to the gym. I didn't want to go to the gym. I hated going to the gym. I hated training. It was not fun for me. But I kept pushing through like an idiot because I wasn't taking time to take a step back and think like, well, what's wrong? Like, do you hate going to the gym? That's not true. I love going to the gym. Do you hate lifting weights? Well, that's not true. I don't like not lifting weights. It's like, okay, well, maybe you need to assess the type of training. And so it's just, for me... It's just in situations like that, and it, it usually for me comes as more of like an anxious feeling. Mm-hmm. Like when I, if I don't want to go out at night, I'll have like this anxious feeling. Like, oh, well, myself says no, so I'm going to stay home and struggle with my dog rather than go out. Um, so it's just, it's probably not the healthiest way, but it's definitely an anxious feeling for me where I'm like, ah, uh-huh. no. And that's when you know something's wrong, and so then you start asking yourself, okay, yeah. what, and trying to figure it out. Yeah, trying yeah. to like deduce, like, do I just not want to go out? Do I... Am I not hungry? Like, what is going on? You know? Yeah. My favorite way um, of figuring out what it is I need to do or want or whatever, we've talked about, like, literally making a list of, like, the things that you like, the things that you don't like. And you start thinking that way and you start, like, really considering yourself first, which I think is... um, Oftentimes we don't do, right? We consider everyone else but ourselves. Yeah. So you, you start to really consider yourself first and you put yourself in that mindset of like, well, what is it that I want? What is it that I need? What is it that I like? And then those things become a lot more clear. And I like to, um, you know, I'm a really big fan of meditation, mm-hmm. even if it's just five minutes, um, just like clearing my mind. And um, usually after that, I have like just a lot of peace and I'm able to really easily make decisions about what it is that I need or want. Um, but you and I have also done a lot of hiking where we come up with, we like solve all the world's problems. Every hiking. single problem. <laughs> so. And that it, goes back to the, the way that I handle it is just taking yourself out of the situation. Mm-hmm. You know, if I'm having, if I'm at home and I feel stuffed up or I can't do what I need to do, I'll take myself out that situation try something else so guys it's trial and error like no one has the right answer only you have the answer which is whatever you decide that is I I would like to comment though about the list thing if you guys ever decide to do that where you sit down and write down what you like and what you don't like prepare to be kind of sad at first at least that was me I wrote down what I liked and what I didn't like and I didn't have a list I have no idea what I really like and what I didn't like And so, like, I'm slowly filling that in, but at first it was like, what do I even 
do? Yeah. <laughs> what do I spend my time doing? It's eye-opening. If you've never done that before, it is really eye-opening. I remember struggling um, writing that list years ago, and then I finally just wrote down, like, really stupid stuff. Like, chocolate. I wrote down... Um, the thing when I wrote down the things that I didn't like, I wrote down tight pants. <laughs> Who but wants to wear tight pants? No one. <laughs> I mean, it really were, were these like trivial things that I was like thinking of. Um, but keep working at it. And you keep, build, yeah. yeah. You build off of that. Um, right. So back to our whole topic today. Our whole topic is, but knowing yourself is. Very important to being able to be consistent. Right. Um, and, and what works for someone else isn't necessarily going to work for you. It may be a tool. So you may say, hey, I like the way that they did that. And you can take it and tweak it and move on with that. But don't, you know, you, you're not going to be able to solve everything the way that someone else solves it. And you're not going to be consistent the way that other people are consistent. Right. Yeah. So just be consistent, guys. Whatever that means for you. <laughs> Consistency in nutrition, consistency in training, and then consistency in your life. Anything else to add, Kristen? So another thing is um, don't pay attention to what other people are doing. Don't spend too much time on social media. Um, well, I mean, spend time on our social media because we like <laughs> to communicate with you. But no, d- don't pay attention to, like, people are posting up, like, these amazing, like, 12-week body transformations and stuff, and you feel like oh my gosh, I have to do all this stuff. It's like the biggest loser. Yeah. You know, the TV show, which I haven't watched in a bajillion years, but, um, like, I think, isn't there something like all these con- biggest loser contestants, like, end up overweight again? Yeah, because they, they regain just, everything back. Right, because they just go, like, all out 100%, and it's not, it's not, um... It's not feasible. It's not maintainable. I, absolutely. You can't maintain it. Um, and same thing goes like watching people's training videos on Instagram and YouTube and all this stuff. And I think that's great and it really helps promote strength sports. But a lot of it, I mean, you're seeing a snippet of these people's lives. And a lot of times you're not seeing the struggles that they go through in their, maybe in their personal life or in their work life or even in their training. You know, you yeah. see the good you see the good times. And I think people are getting better about posting up like, Hey, I'm real. And Hey, I failed at this or whatever, but it's still, it's not, it's not real life. So don't pay attention to it. Just focus on what it is that you want to accomplish Mm -hmm. and set a plan and stick to it like 80 to 90% of the time and for a long period of time. And you will be amazed at what you can accomplish. Don't people like underestimate what they can accomplish in a year And then overestimate they can accomplish in, what, a couple weeks or a month or whatever? So people greatly overestimate what they can accomplish in a month and greatly underestimate underestimate. what they can accomplish in a year. Yeah. So don't be like that, guys. And I challenge you. I challenge you, because I'm sure all of you have social medias. I challenge you to post something about a challenge that you faced, how you handled it, and how that has made you better off now than you were before. And tag us in it and let us know, like, what what have you overcome? How have you learned stuff about yourself? And share that with other people. Because I think, and this could be a whole other podcast, but social media has just become too much of a snippet of this beautiful, wonderful life. And that's not real life. Like, there was one of my favorite quotes is, um, it has to do with how... You know, people show you snippets of their beautiful life, but in between a beautiful, all these snippets is just the mundane and the ordinary, and we need to find beauty in the mundane and the ordinary. So I challenge you guys to post something, just like I said, something that you overcame, how you overcame it, and tag us in it. We'd love to hear it. We'll share it on one of our episodes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll uh, see you next time. If you like what you heard today, please help us connect with other female badasses. Um, We would love if you would leave us a review on iTunes, tell your friends about us, um, visit our website, which is empoweredbyiron.com. You can find each of us on Instagram. Mary is at marymo underscore 92, and Kristen is at Kristen with an I, Lander. 
Um, future topics will include nutrition, programming and training, mental health, and just general female badassery. Yeah, so let us know what you want to hear. If you have any input, that'd be awesome. Um, and guys, this is Empowered by Iron is... We want it to be a resource and an outlet for women who are finding their confidence, their independence, and their strength through iron. So thank you for listening. Thank you for checking in. And until next time, I'm Mary. I'm Kristen. And this is Empowered by Iron.